Chapter 2 of Science of Being Well. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Preston. Science of Being Well by Wallace D. Waddles. Chapter 2 the foundations of faith before man can think in the certain way which will cause his diseases to be healed he must believe in certain truths which are here stated all things are made from one living substance which in its original state permeates penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe while all visible things are made from it Yet this substance, in its first formless condition, is in and through all the visible forms that it has made. Its life is in all, and its intelligence is in all. This substance creates by thought, and its method is by taking the form of that which it thinks about. The thought of a form held by this substance causes it to assume that form, thought, of emotion cause it to institute that motion. Forms are created by this substance in moving itself into certain attitudes or positions. When original substance wishes to create a given form, it thinks of the motions which will produce that form. When it wishes to create a world, it thinks of the motion, perhaps extending through ages, which will result in its coming into the attitude and form of the world and these motions are made. When it wishes to create an oak tree, it thinks of the sequences of movement, perhaps extending through ages, which will result in the form of an oak tree, and these motions are made. The particular sequences of motion by which differing forms should be produced were established in the beginning. They are changeless. Certain motions instituted in the formless substance will forever produce certain forms. Man's body is formed from the original substance and is the result of certain motions which first existed as thought of original substance. The motions which produce, renew, and repair the body of man are called functions, and these functions are of two classes, voluntary and involuntary. The involuntary functions are under the control of the principle of health in man and are performed in a perfectly healthy manner so long as man thinks in a certain way. The voluntary functions of life are eating, drinking, breathing, and sleeping. These, entirely or in part, are under the direction of man's conscious mind, and he can perform them in a perfectly healthy way if he will. If he does not perform them in a healthy way, he cannot long be well. So we see that if man thinks in a certain way and eats, drinks, breathes, and sleeps in a corresponding way, he will be well. The involuntary functions of man's life are under the direct control of the principle of health, and so long as man thinks in a perfectly healthy way, these functions are perfectly performed, for the action of the principle of health is largely directed by man's conscious thought affecting his subconscious mind. Man is a thinking center, capable of originating thought, and as he does not know everything, he makes mistakes and thinks error. Not knowing everything, he believes things to be true which are not true. Man holds in his thought the idea of disease and abnormal functioning and condition, and so perverts the action of the principle of health, causing diseased and abnormal functioning and conditions within his own body. In the original substance, there are held only the thoughts of perfect motion, perfect and healthy function, complete life, God never thinks disease or imperfection. 
but for countless ages men have held thoughts of disease, abnormality, old age, and death, and the perverted functioning resulting from these thoughts has become a part of the inheritance of the race. Our ancestors have, for many generations, held imperfect ideas concerning human form and functioning, and we begin life with racial, subconscious impressions of imperfection and disease. This is not natural or a part of the plan of nature. The purpose of nature can be nothing else than the perfection of life. This we see from the very nature of life itself. It is the nature of life to continually advance toward more perfect living. Advancement is the inevitable result of the very act of living. Increase is always the result of active living. Whatever lives must live more and more. The seed lying in the granary has life, but it is not living. Put it into the soil and it becomes active and at once begins to gather to itself from the surrounding substance and to build a plant form. It will so cause increase that a seed head will be produced containing 30, 60, or 100 seeds, each having as much life as the first. Life by living increases. Life cannot live without increasing. And the fundamental impulse of life is to live. It is in response to this fundamental impulse that original substance works and creates. God must live, and he cannot live except as he creates and increases. In multiplying forms, he is moving on to live more. The universe is a great advancing life, and the purpose of nature is the advancement of life toward perfection, toward perfect functioning. The purpose of nature is perfect health. The purpose of nature, so far as man is concerned, is that he should be continuously advancing into more life and progressing toward perfect life and that he should live the most complete life possible in his present sphere of action. This must be so, because that which lives in man is seeking more life. Give a little child a pencil and paper, and he begins to draw crude figures. That which lives in him is trying to express itself in art. Give him a set of blocks, and he will try to build something. That which lives in him is seeking expression in architecture. Seat him at a piano, and he will try to draw harmony from the keys. That which lives in him is trying to express itself in music. That which lives in man is always seeking to live more. And since man lives most when he is well, the principle of nature in him can seek only health. The natural state of man is a state of perfect health, and everything in him and in nature tends toward health. Sickness can have no place in the thought of original substance, for it is by its own nature continually impelled toward the fullest and most perfect life, therefore toward health. Man, as he exists in the thought of the formless substance, has perfect health. Disease, which is abnormal or perverted function, motion, imperfectly made or made in the direction of an imperfect life has no place in the thought of the thinking stuff. The supreme mind never thinks of disease. Disease was not created or ordained by God or sent forth from him. It is wholly a product of separate consciousness, of the individual thought of man. God, the formless substance, does not see disease, think disease, know disease, or recognize disease. Disease is recognized only by the thought of man. God thinks nothing but health. From all the foregoing, we see that health is a fact or truth in the original substance from which we are all formed, and that disease is imperfect functioning, resulting from the imperfect thought of men, past and present. If man's thoughts of himself had always been those of perfect health, 
man could not possibly now be otherwise than perfectly healthy. Man in perfect health is the thought of original substance, and man in imperfect health is the result of his own failure to think perfect health and to perform the voluntary functions of life in a healthy way. We will here arrange in a syllabus the basic truths of the science of being well. There is a thinking substance from which all things are made and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. It is the life of all. The thought of a form in this substance causes the form. The thought of emotion produces the motion. In relation to man, the thoughts of this substance are always of perfect functioning and perfect health. Man is a thinking center capable of original thought, and his thought has power over his own functioning. By thinking imperfect thought, he has caused imperfect and perverted functioning, and by performing the voluntary functions of life in a perverted manner, he is assisted in causing disease. If man will think only thoughts of perfect health, he can cause within himself the functioning of perfect health. All the power of life will be exerted to assist him. But this healthy functioning will not continue unless man performs the external or voluntary function of living in a healthy manner. Man's first step must be to learn how to think perfect health, and a second step to learn how to eat, drink, breathe, and sleep in a perfectly healthy way. If man takes these two steps, he will certainly become well and remain so. End of chapter two. Recording by Jill Preston.